Oh, all right. This Multi-Swiss 826 is a million plus dollar machine and it has eight spindles. And this machine right here is the Tornos GT32. Now it's a fraction of the cost, but it only has one spindle. So in today's video, I wanna show you guys, if you take an eight spindle machine and a one spindle machine with the exact same operations, the exact same speeds and feeds, how does this thing compare to an eight spindle machine? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna find out. So let's get into it. So the Tornos GT32 has all the same tools in it as our Multi-Swiss does behind me. The difference being is the amount of spindles we have. The Multi-Swiss has eight spindles, which means I can do eight operations simultaneously. This Tornos GT32, however, has one spindle. So even though both machines have the same amount of tools in them, the Tornos GT32 can only attack one operation at a time, which means it's gonna be slower. So how much faster is the Multi-Swiss than the GT32 when making this part? Well, if you watched my last video, you saw that I took one second off the cycle time, which saved roughly a week of work. Well, let me tell you something. This is gonna be a lot more than one week of work you're gonna lose. So stick around to the end of this video because I'm telling you, when you see how much faster that machine is, it is going to blow your mind. Now, if you're like me, when you're watching that Tornos GT32 cut, you're probably saying to yourself, man, this is a really slow way to make this part. You can make it way faster. And I agree with you 100%. That's not what this video is about. This video is about if you take the exact same operations off the Multi-Swiss and put them on a single spindle machine, what is the time difference? If you watched our last video, then you know the Multi-Swiss ran in seven seconds. Well, when I take those exact same operations and I put them with the exact same feeds on the Torno Swiss GT32, the cycle time comes out to be 64 seconds. To give you an idea of what these numbers mean, it would take you over 40 days, just over 40 days, to run half a million of these parts on the Multi-Swiss 826 at a seven second cycle time. To run half a million parts on one spindle like this machine at a 64 second cycle time is gonna take you 370 days, and that is without stopping whatsoever, which isn't real life, I think we all know that. So let me put that into perspective for you here. That's a little bit over a month versus an entire year. That's 960 hours versus 8,880 hours. So what you can do with those 11 months you now gained, well, I'll leave that up to your imagination. So it's time we address the elephant in the room, or elephants in the room, I guess. I'm in a room full of elephants. I wanna go over what I think we could do to make this part way faster on both machines. So some of the things right off the bat, there is no need to rough turn behind this thing. In fact, there's no need to turn at all behind this thing. You could just come in with a groove tool, like a 1 8 wide or three millimeter wide groove tool and plunge turn this whole thing way faster. It'd save you a bunch of time. Another thing you could do is polygon turn the hex. That would be probably a lot faster. How much faster? Well, here, watch this footage. I mean, another thing off the top of my head is you could probably thread this in like three passes because it's brass. You don't really need to take all the passes I took. So yeah, in reality, I think if I was making this part and I had to quote it on a job, I'd probably say this is 35 to 40 seconds, but that's not what this video is about. And I really want to emphasize this for you guys who are riddling through the comment section right now. This video is about showing you if you take the exact same operations from one machine and put them on the other, what is the time difference? said that three times now. I hope it's clear. I guarantee you there's still going to be comments about it, but that is the point of this video. So now let's go over to the Multi-Swiss. I want to show you a couple things I would do on there to make that even faster. So on the Multi-Swiss, I would do a couple of the same things. I'd get rid of the plunge grooving and I would just drop in and groove turn it. Another thing I would do at the same time is also polygonal turn instead of milling the hex. Now the number one time saving I'm going to need on the Multi-Swiss is the sub spindle. And for that, I would just use a form tool for this back end. If you get a form tool in there, you're gonna probably cut easily close to a second off the cycle time. So that'll get this cycle time down to six seconds. So if you fully optimized them, I'd say this is gonna come down to about a six second to a 40 second time difference, which is still wildly faster if you're running mass quantities of parts 
this is the machine to go with without question. This thing does not take up a lot of room for how fast you can make parts. In order for you to compete with this thing with single spindle machines, you're gonna have to get like eight of them, which is gonna take up a ton of floor space. So if you're making quantities over like 20,000 parts or higher, I definitely recommend the multi-Swiss. You're gonna rifle through your work. Now, if you're a job shop, like most Swiss shops are, your quantities are between one and 10,000 pieces, which is why in those shops, you see more single spindle Swiss machines. All right, now to show you guys I didn't cheat on anything here, I'm gonna show you a part from the multi-Swiss and apart from the GT32 in the quality office, so you can see they're exactly the same. Okay, so we're here in the quality office at the Shadow Graph. Now I noticed in the comments section of my last video, a lot of you don't like that I call this a Shadow Graph. Well, my dad called this a Shadow Graph, and his dad, my grandfather, taught him it was a Shadow Graph as well. And my great-granddad taught my granddad that it's also a Shadow Graph. Johnny, it's an optical comparator. You're an optical comparator. So anyways, on the Shadow Graph, you can see that both parts are exactly the same. I didn't cheat in any way. The diameters, the lengths, they all line up, they all match up. So yeah, nothing too crazy going on there. Let's go back to the machine now. <laughs> oh, all right, well that's it for our video today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. By the way, the GT32 is an amazing machine. I don't want you to think any other thoughts on it. It is super cool. Another cool thing I can show you guys is we just got the Nano up and running, so make sure you stay tuned for our next video. That's why you need to hit that notifications bell, guys. You'll be able to get notified when this thing's up and running. See our next video. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and don't be stupid and ring that notifications bell. See ya! So if you watch do this here, just turns. Like, what am I doing over here right now? I'm such an idiot. I cannot believe, like, I have this job. Oh, oh, it's so cold. It's so cold. It's so cold. I hate cold showers. I hate cold showers.